Alright, here we are in Unity. We just created a new game, Blank Scene. Uh, it's called Simple PayPal Storefront Integration Demo. So, first off, we'll go grab our assets. Now, we'll be wanting two assets. We'll be wanting um, a demo game called Santa Claus is Coming to Town. So, we'll go ahead and import that. Everything selected. Looks all good. So, select import. Okay, we have our first asset imported. Now we'll just go and grab the simple PayPal storefront. Now what I'm gonna do here, instead of actually grabbing it from the store, I'm just gonna import a local copy that I have that's slightly more up to date. Now we have all the assets we need in our project. So let's go ahead and open up the demo scene just so we can get our little feel for what we're working with here. So you can see the scene just there. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, have a little look around. Let's if I can uh, navigate. Oh, there we go. So you got like your uh, menu here and then you got a little 3D scene, so Let's just go ahead and run it, so see what we're working with here. So there we go, got a nice little menu. Press enter to continue. Launches us into the game, so we've got our main character here. Just got our walk around, attack. So it uh, looks like uh, got to defeat all the enemies before, um, before you get overwhelmed. So yeah, nice little game. We'll just uh, end that here. All right, so now we have our all the assets we need. Next step is to grab our PayPal credentials. Okay, so to get your PayPal credentials, what you need to do is create a PayPal developer account. So you can do that by going to the PayPal developer website. This is what we want here, developer.paypal.com. I've already got an account, so I'm just gonna log in. Um, if you don't have one, you can sign up, but yeah, I'll just log in. Okay, so I already have an app, app name set up. This is what's gonna con contain your credentials. But um, when you log in for the first time, you won't have one of these. So just go ahead, create the app and then enter the details that you need. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. You'll have your own app. Uh, further details are provided in the document anyway with this asset if you get stuck. But once you've done that, you just um, you can select between your sandbox and the live environments up here. Uh, because we're in the testing stage, we're just going to leave it on sandbox. and. What we want from here is our um, client ID and our secret to enter into the um, PayPal asset back in Unity. So to get those, we just click on our app and um, you can see your client ID here and your secret here, down here. So yeah, that's all you need at this stage. Alrighty, back in Unity now. So the next step will be to configure our properties in the simple PayPal storefront scene. So we're just gonna open up the storefront demo scene, which is under here. Uh, yeah, sure, let's save the other changes. Okay, so there's one main property file that you'll need to configure and that's under the script instances, global PayPal properties. So these are the two properties here, the client ID and the secret that we set up earlier. So we'll just go and grab those now and drop those in. And you'll notice that our sandbox is selected here and we'll be using USD currency. And you'll also notice the return URL and cancel URL are just default to google.com but um, if you were to do this properly you might want to have like your own website or um, some other 
uh, final location that the player lands on when they uh, finish their payment. But anyway, let's go and get our um, uh, IDs. So log in again. Okay, grab our client ID. And we'll enter it here. Well, that's not it. <laughs> Let's see if we can actually copy the client ID. That looks a bit more like it. Okay, let's grab the secret. And we'll drop the secret back in. There we go. So if we were to run this scene now, we'll just get like the basic store that um, opens by default. So there you go, this is just the default items that you have in the store. But what we want to do is set up some items that are appropriate for the game that um, we're working with here. So that's what we'll do in the next step. Well, technically adding in the items into the store is still part of configuring the store in step three. So before we do step four, we'll um, configure our items. So to do that, we navigate under this location here, store UI, all the way down to store content items. And these are the three items you saw in the store. Now what we want to do in this um, example is get rid of two of these. Let's just delete those. That leaves us with one item left. And we'll edit this to be um, some running shoes that will make our character run super fast. So what we'll do first is um, actually use the correct image so what we'll want to do is go to item sprites and add in a new sprite so we'll select some speed boots here and one thing we'll want to do when we import it is to set the texture type to be sprite 2d and ui and when you select that click apply that just makes sure it actually appears correctly in your scene so you've done that now and you go back to the um, game object here and we'll select that new image that we entered. So look for the speed boots, there they are. Um, call them speed boots. We'll sell them for $1.50 and we'll just set the item description to be um, run super fast and then we'll say plus 10 speed or something like that. Cool, so if we run the store now, we should see that new item pop up in our store. There we go, speed boots. So that's looking good. Okay, next thing we'll wanna do is integrate our storefront back into our actual game. So we'll head on over to our scene, our game scene. And the way we're gonna integrate it is pretty much just by adding a new line here to the menu. So at the moment it says press enter to continue. And what we're gonna do is add another line so it's, um, they have an option to open the store. So we're gonna say um, press the S key to open store and we'll just change the color of that to be green so that's looking pretty good now we're just going to wire that up in the code so um <clears throat> there's this demo stage.cs which is where the current logic exists for the um game start on the enter key so we're just going to copy the current logic for the enter key and almost replicate it to be the same for the S key to open our store. So when they press the S key, and I believe all these other conditions are fine, we want to keep those. Um, what we'll want to do is open our store. Um, and that just made me realize that we 
won't be able to do this until we actually add both of our scenes into the store because what we're going to do here is load a uh, new scene which is going to be our store so we'll head back to unity and we'll add both scenes into our build right now so go to build settings so we added the game scene into our build save our changes now we'll head over to our storefront uh, open the storefront scene open build settings and then add this to the open scene so in our build settings we now have two scenes and remember that number one is the storefront so that's what we'll be adding back into the game in the game uh, scene so head back to the game scene now go back to the code uh, so I believe the like script for the uh, menu logic is actually attached to this game object here yeah here we go demo stage so uh, yeah, if I just double click that it'll take me to where I was so what we want to do is open the scene manager and we're going to load scene asynchronously and we're going to use the overload where we can select our build index of the storefront which was one and then the scene mode we want to choose which is additive and we choose additive because we want our storefront to appear on top of the game and not um, in a separate um, instance where the game would otherwise be erased so we've made those changes now hopefully if we run do a little test run and we press the S key there we go we've got our store popped up so that's looking pretty nice so far and if we hit the exit button here it'll take us back to the menu all right On the home stretch now, all we have left to do is implement the logic for what happens when the user purchases their item. So in our example, we're going to want to set the player's speed to be faster than what it normally is when they have when they purchase the speed boots. So to do that, we've got a callback script on our storefront we can use. So that callback script will get fired when a successful um, payment occurs. And that script is called use item. So that's located within the um, simple PayPal storefront asset under storefront use item. So yeah, as you can see here, it's just got one function in it, uh, use, um, use. So it accepts a string item name. So the name of the item getting purchased and it's got instructions here on how to implement this method. So pretty much just want to say check the name of the item that gets purchased and then um, execute some custom logic so I've got that saved here ready to go so I'm just gonna pop that in so we've got if the item name is speed boots gonna set the player's speed property to be faster than normal so 20 and that's all we need to do that's all the coding done all the configuration done now we're just ready to test So the moment of truth is upon us. We're going to kick off a build and do an end-to-end -end test. And hopefully, if all goes well, we'll be running around in our uh, fancy new speed boots, um, destroying some zombies at breakneck speed. So um, yeah, let's give it a crack. All right, so we're going to open our store. There we go, even got a nice little background there. So we're gonna hit buy. It's creating our purchase, we go check out. Um, getting redirected here to the PayPal checkout. Now we're in the sandbox environment, so we're gonna log in with our sandbox credentials. Just gonna go continue. Alright, this is going to take us back to our um, our return URL page, which is Google. So maybe for your store, you want to set this page to be like a receipt page or something, and you can just have a message saying your purchase was successful. Now you may return to your game. So 
We'll jump back over to the game. And we can see it says purchase complete. And we can now close the storefront. And we return to our game scene. So, with any luck now, our player should be an absolute beast. Oh, look at him. He's off to the races. He can barely keep up with the screen. Yeah, he's absolutely tearing it up. These zombies don't stand a chance now. <laughs> look at him go. Oh, I feel, almost feel sorry for the zombies, but... Anyway, guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Let me know if you've got any comments, questions. Always happy to help. And, uh, yeah, hope to catch you in the next video. See you guys.